Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now Habakkuk is embracing himself for the Lord to speak. You know, we, and they make that joke, what's the smallest man in the Bible? Well, Habakkuk, you know, he stood on his watch. Well, it's too bad many Christians don't stand on their watch and don't prepare themselves for the Word of God. Because that's exactly what he's doing. And to be reproved is to be ready to, hey, man, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. And we're going to see it in writing. Make it plain upon tables. Now the old word for that is tablets. That's the same thing that the Ten Commandments were written on. And when I grew up as a kid, you can go to the, to the drugstore, what the name of it was. You can go to the stationery section and you can buy yourself a tablet with writing paper. And today you got tablets that are computer just as well that he may run that readeth it so when you read what the vision the Habakkuk is going to to have of God you're to run and it's going to be about the pride of the Chaldeans For the vision is yet for an appointed time. God has a specific time. You can date all you want. It's God's timing. Those that are impatient, you got to learn that. Those who try and make a buck and how smart you are, it's God's timing. You're not going to date the rapture, give a date of a Hebrew God of a Roman Catholic calendar. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. But though it tarry, wait for it. Now what it is, even we are warned in this day and age about the rapture. There are going to be some people, you know, well I thought, you know, Paul was waiting for the rapture, thought the rapture was going to happen. The Lord delayeth his coming. That's exactly what Habakkuk is writing about. God said it was going to happen. It hasn't happened. Because God has appointed time. It ain't your time. It ain't your calendar. It ain't your wristwatch. God says, wait for it. Today, wait for the rapture. It's going to happen. Don't give up. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Well, you know, look, it's been 2,000 years. That's okay. We don't know what the date is. God does. And God is not going to be one second late. Nor one second early. Than that appointed time. That he is set for. For all of history. And it says, by the end it shall speak. What shall it speak? God's faithful. God did not lie. There are people probably today, and Christians, and people ever since the time of Paul and Peter. Well, the rapture didn't happen. Guess it's not coming. And what are you going to say when it does come?
the prophecy. Imagine the Jews got to the point, oh, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. When he came, they weren't ready for him yet. And they didn't want him. I think the rapture is going to come when Christians don't want him. It's going to interfere with their life. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But here's the expression you find in the Bible in uh, Romans chapter 117. Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38. Now here it says, But the just shall live by his faith. Paul writes it as by faith. Habakkuk is writing to people Deal with you because we're not going to go to Romans and Galatians, or we won't hope we would get there. But he's writing to people hey, God said it's going to happen. And it'll be people like today, it's not going to happen. God's a liar. And Habakkuk is responded to if you have faith in God and wait. On God you'll be just if you call God a liar you'll be unjust and you've given up your faith so here we go with the Chaldeans yea also because he transgressed by one alcohol It's more than just grape juice. He is a proud man. America loves his alcohol. Alcohol supports, you know, drink responsible, don't drink and drive, and we support race cars. You need a driver's license to show your ID to buy alcohol. A proud man, that's what America is. We better look at these nations. The Chaldeans are no more. We better look at these nations that are no more. And look to America. Because Americans and Christian Americans think that America is going to live forever. They think that Every gate of New Jerusalem is going to be an American red, red, white, and blue. No way, no, no how. Neither keep it at home. Today, the home is just stop around, take a shower, change your clothes, and head right back out. Who enlarges his desire, what he wants, what he lusts for, as hell. You know what hell wants? Hell wants everybody to go into it. Hell desires the lost souls to come on in. Hell never gets out on the street and says, hey, don't come to me. Oh, I've seen, you know, I, I died and I saw the, the, the white light of the operating room. I never saw a sign, don't come to hell. And is as death, and I, I forget, it is Proverbs 29 or 30, or maybe 31. It says, you know, the, the fire and death, if it could, it, it would de just devour the whole world. Now, fire is not going to devour the whole world, 
in the time of man, but fire will devour the whole world and universe. Outside the rapture, death is going to get everybody around the world. Outside the millennium, death is not going to get everybody in the world. And these people, they want everything, they want it all, they, they're just as much as hell desires lost souls, and death desires. You've never seen a cemetery, sorry, all filled up. I am told, and I don't know how much is true, I don't think it would be a false wide to lie, but I understand in New Orleans, a place that's hard to, to find places to, to bury bodies, is they'll get to a point where they'll, they'll, they'll stack all the bones in the back of the crypt. They'll push them all in the back. To... And it cannot be satisfied. You know, you, you, you want that car. All right, you got that car, and now you want the house, and you got the house and the car, and now you want the camper, you want the RV, and you got the, now you want the vacation at whatever place, and you got the vacation, now you want to go on a cruise, and that ain't good enough, and now you ain't. Man is not satisfied in his sin. Paul said, I'm content. And to the average human being, Paul's life would be a failure, a ruin, and of no sort. But gather unto him all nations. Oh, America's got all the nations inside her. A great melting pot. We got a world of television and advertisements and advertisements and ads. And if you haven't got it, get it. And now that you've got it, we got the brand new. We got the brand new style now. In two more months, when you buy this, we'll get you the brand new new one. one. And heapeth upon him all people. And what, what Habakkuk is saying about the Chaldeans, if you look at their, their war and you look at their history, like Adolf Hitler, like Alexander the Great, like the Roman Empire, they, they conquered lands. They conquered people. They went all the way down into Egypt. They conquered Judah. Okay? You know, we won World War II when, you know, Japanese went, surrendered on our battleship, and we fought the war, World War II of Germany. We, we beat them. We World War I. We you know, did that, and we lost Korea, and we lost Vietnam. We, we don't mention those. We lost Afghanistan. War. We don't mention that. We're the greatest. We're the best. And, okay? I think we're got to a safe point in time of years right now. Maybe. Maybe a few more years. Where's the Nazis? Now maybe there's a few living. How about this? The greatest ships they ever spoke about is the Titanic. Not even God could sink the Titanic. There's no more survivors of the Titanic. They're all dead. What about the Chaldeans? Where are they? The Babylonians, where are they? Where's the Greeks? You know, the, these, these, these ministers and the Greek and all that. Where are the Greeks? And if you met a Greek today, he wanted to be speaking the Greek of the Bible that you speak. Like we don't speak the English of the 1611 no more. You know, uh, old archaic in, uh, English of the King James. What about that old archaic Greek that you speak? All these people and nations, and where are they today? We talk about the age of explorers, the Vikings. Where were, 
Have you met a Viking? <laughs> Shall not all these take up a parable against him? A story? And a taunting proverb against him? Won't you come up with proverb? Won't you come up with parable? Won't you come up with a fireside chat uh, of stories of the Chaldeans? And you, you've heard stories, you know, about people and legends. And the Chinese are full of them, of the folklore stories of their ancestors. Always some Chinese man said something important. Confused and said, I never said half the stuff the people said I say I said. Woe to him that increases. That which is not his. You stolen it. You deceived to get it. You broke laws to get it. Whatever it is, and it's even in the Jewish law, you gain something, you didn't gain it right. How long? The very fact what the Europeans, now Americans, did to the Native Americans, friend, we hadn't read Galatians 6 7 yet for that. I think all this, this hostility of the African Americans is the fact is we brought them over here for slavery and we mistreated them. Galatians 6 7. We've been teaching evolution in our schools and now it's played out. And to him that laid himself with thick clay. I don't know. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? Now, that's what America is not expecting. To the Babylonians, the Chaldeans and the Medes came and conquered Babylon. And then the Persians came and conquered. And then the Greeks conquered the Medes and the Persians. God's people, Israel, were conquered by the Syrians. Though they were warned by God. The, the, the people in Judah were warned by God that the Babylonians are coming. But these nations were not warned. Sodom and Gomorrah were not overthrown by a nation. They were overthrown by God. They, it, it was sudden. God became their enemy. I don't ever expect that Adolf Hitler thought the Americans would come in and join the war. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know America's not going to stand in her sin. I know America ain't going to be in New Jerusalem. I know America has sinned against God. I know America has a lot of reaping for her sowing. And I know how America in her pride is. It's going to be somebody who's going to rise up. And in the end of the whole thing, it's going to be like, what was that? Them? There in our, I mean, would the Native Americans all the, oh, here comes these people in these ships. Now they're in reservation. Now they are drunkards. Because the Europeans called Americans have gotten them drunkards. America got Manhattan for a, a, a few beads. Twinkly little pretty things that that fabric acid, the eyes of the Native American. God's going to get you back. And awake that thou should vex thee. Awake that shall vex thee. You've been vexed. And you wake up. Too late. 
That shall be for the booties, and that's like a spoil, a lot, unto them. Look at all the little Chaldean tinklets we found. A, a, a Chaldean sword is hanging in someone's den. A Chaldean shield is out in a man's chariot garage. It's not being used by the Chaldeans no more. Listen, the very fact is that we lost Korea. We, well, we gave up Korea. We gave up Vietnam. We gave up Afghanistan. It's to be the fact is, maybe the next one, we're going to be done and finished. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. And our military is going out there, got all kinds of war souvenirs from the great and little battles. All the redmen of the people shall spoil thee. It become time for the Chaldeans that they spoil the nation. They're going to be spoiled. They're going to be in ruin. What these nations need to realize what you do, you're going to get back in double. And what, uh, what a, a, a greater cause is for the Chaldeans is they laid their hand on Israel. And God said to Abraham, and Isaac said to Jacob, curse them that curse you. Now, America has not been friendly all the time to Israel. And we're getting a Congress, we're getting a representative, we're getting a government that will probably turn their back. America's all upset, gas prices are so high and all that. We would sell Israel out if we could get the Arabs to give us cheaper gasoline. Go ask the Bushes. Because of men's blood, you're killing. Now God said there will be wars. But an unjust war. The soldiers won't be charged. Because they're obeying the government. Romans 13. But what about the government that What exactly did the American government go over besides for the Catholic Church, Vietnam? God will lay it out for the leaders. What exactly was the American Revolutionary War for? What was the American Civil War for? God will hold the leaders. American Civil War brothers on the battlefield dead. Fathers and mothers weeping. Where the children were on two sides. Well, if it was because the African American, there, there was a simple solution: send them back to Africa. Well, no, just, just shut up. That would save the blood of our brothers and sisters. Because right now, the American Civil War, if it was for the colored person, ain't doing the colored person no good today. He's living in ghettos. He's poor. The government is practically supporting them all. We've been just as much take the money, send them back. But I've heard other causes of the sin. God's going to weigh those all out in the, in the leaders of the nation of those wars. God will hell accountable. But what about the Christian that fought? You did what your government told you to do. It'd be worse that you didn't do what your government told you to do. Romans 13. The powers that be, they're ordained of God. Well, those powers that be are going to have to give an account to God. 
I think we'd be quite shocked to realize in all our troops we sent overseas, and the troops here in our own country, the Civil War, the Indian Wars, and the French Wars, and all that, I think we will be quite shocked to learn the true reason why they were fought. See, the judgment of God, remember we learned the other day, it, you know, you got to wait it out, and God will handle it. And for the violence of the land, and guess what's going on in America today? Violence. Well, I don't know where this violence is coming from. What is one of the classification of your television shows? It's V for violence. Well, we're going to a movie, kids, and it's rated R. It's got V for violence. And then you wonder why. Oh, here you go, son. Here, here's a video game. It's got V for violence. And then you wonder why there's violence everywhere. Let's take God in prayer and everything out of the schools. Well, when you take God out, and you got one just man in all the earth, you've got violence. Of the city and of all that dwell therein. So there's violence everywhere. There was violence in all the earth when God called Noah. As the days of Noah. Woe to him that covereth, coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. So not as only is he coveting. But he's adding evil covetousness to his house. That house can mean family. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You may have evil intentions of your family. You may want evil things of your family. You ready? That he may set his nest on high. You ever hear a nest egg? I'm saving up for the future. I've got an IRA. I got the saving clause of my employer. I got CDs. I got investments. So did the Chaldeans. Go ahead, change history all you want. You don't change it. Now, they may not have had stocks and bonds like we have, but they had that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Well, when I get old and all that, you know, I got my investments and all that. That'll take care of me the day I die. I've got health insurance, so if the doctor says it's... What are you going to do? You ain't going to beat God. You're not going to stand off eternity, the new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem. And there you go. I beat God. I beat everybody. Well, that's how Satan started Lucifer. That ain't going to happen again. Because in the evil we're speaking about, you're going to stand one day before Jesus. You're not going to stand before God. You're going to see Jesus, not God. I don't say man. You're going to be stark naked. Anything you're ever going to have is going to be written in books. That's it. And from what Jesus said, when you go into that lake of fire, you turn into a worm. 
a little maggot. And that's it. What's going to prepare you for the lake of fire for all eternity? You can't have your booze. You're not going to have your partying in darkness. Your home is gone. Your car is gone. Your job, everything is gone. But America thinks, oh, America is that heaven. And the second coming of Donald Trump. He's going to save the world and save us. You know what Donald means? It means mighty world power. I fear the world, not me. Now, I'm not making no prophecy or anything like that, but I fear the world if you get the second coming of Donald Trump. Because you can't see that your Savior, your Messiah, couldn't even keep a marriage. His wife just died. She fell. And from, from the, what I read, she, she must have banged her chest on something. She died. In her lifetime, she had forgiven Donald. After divorcing him for sleeping around with a woman that would become his second wife. And I heard that a third wife is the same story. You let Donald Trump be your savior. He ain't mine. He couldn't. Eat. Listen, I, I've been married twice. I'm looking for a third time. My marriage is ended by death. Both my wives, within 24 hours of their death, called out to me. Donald Trump, you look into him, he's bankrupt, I believe, six times in his life of his businesses. Man, if, if he can't do his business, he can't do the country. Well, he held a Bible upside down in front of a church and said, Jesus. Uh, he used the same teleprompter that Obama uses. That was written in his speech. I don't know when the last time a president ever wrote his own speech. To fool you. What I'm saying is, you gullible Christians, and I got the little fingers going, you believe that this Republican is going to save the world. I've heard you in Baptist churches speaking about him. Along with your great preaching, your great church. What happened to Jesus? Oh, you eliminated Jesus. You would hate to have Jesus in the White House. Because he weren't allowed the corruption of anybody. The power of evil delivered ain't the government. It ain't money. That's what this person is relying on. He's got himself in a good military position. He's up there with, I don't know what you call the 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 Chaldean leader of the nation. Do you know Naaman? Naaman was right there with the ruler of the nation. But he was a leper. That when they found out that there was a prophet in Israel, the ruler of the nation wrote a letter to the king of Israel. My servant here, Naaman, has leprosy. What did the ruler do for Naaman and his position of the government? As much as Pilate, as where he stood in the Roman government and he wouldn't even listen to his wife. And there's all kinds of, of, of things they say 
that pilot went mad and all that. I don't know what it is, but how about just put your faith and trust in Jehovah here, and today put your faith and trust in Jesus. Because I think we're going to a famine. I think we're going to another worldwide depression. And your gold and silver is not going to taste too good. You can't even get mustard on the shelf. Thou has consulted shame to thy house, again, house, by cutting off many people. You abandoned yourself. You isolated yourself. You you separate yourself from your family. Because you're a jerk. All they want is my money. You know, I don't want those people around my house. I married her, but I didn't marry her family unless they got money. Do you know what Cornelius did at the invitation of Peter to come and hear about Jesus? He invited everybody he knew. When Peter walked in that house, he smelled sausage and he, what's all these people here? Only angel told me to fight you and that's, I expect you have something good to say. And has sinned against thy soul. You're going to hell. That's an expression whether you're Jewish, Gentile. If you sinned against thy soul, in the Old Testament especially, you died and go to hell. I don't care what you have. I don't care what you don't have. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. He with the most toys in the end is still burning in hell without the toys. For the stone shall cry out a wall. And the beam that's making the ceiling out of the timber shall answer to it. You say, what's all that about? Your house is going to speak against you one day. I'm a piece of wood that I got at the home store. He stole me. You won't believe that, you know, he swindled his way to get me cheaper than I really am. The contractor that came and put me up over here, he didn't pay him full-time wages. He took, he, he had somebody put me up and, and he took him to court and said he didn't really like it, but he liked me. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I'm not complete content. If these people didn't cry out, the stones would cry out. Do you know, we used to have a thing called cassette tape. I know, I'm ancient history. Do you know what's on that tape to make you record? It's a rock. That there's a possibility everywhere around you, something is recording you, if not the government. If God keeps great books, and he does, and all the stuff with your doorbell buzzer now recording everything, and your cards recorded, God's keeping what is being recorded about you, and it's going to cry against you. The greatest thing that's going to show up at our judgment, saved or lost, 
judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment is the very fact of the stuff that recorded us to prove our innocence or proved our guilt. All the years that you lived in your house, it's going to... The skeletons are going to come out of the closet. The, the bedroom door is going to speak. People don't realize, Christians don't realize, the lost don't realize. And I can't even fathom when an individual, saved or lost, stands at his judgment, everything that is yea for him and everything that is nay. You may have forgotten or had no regulation. That ain't going to pass with God. Because he writes in Leviticus, When a man sinneth, and sinneth, and realize he sinned, when it calls to his intention, you are sinning even if you don't know you're sinning. Don't let your judgment day be, oh, no, I didn't know. Talk to the Father now. Talk to the Lord now. Say, whatever have I done, I've sinned against you, that I may confess my sin, that you might forgive and cleanse me. Because if you get an either judgment, oh, I didn't know that was a sin. You got a Bible? Yeah, I got an NIV. I said, did you have a Bible? Or a church right out of New King James. I said, did you have a Bible? Didn't I say somebody your church said a King James? Uh, uh, you, you can't say, oh, I didn't know the Fifth Amendment, God. Plain and simple. 